la Asamblea. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Narendra Modi, Prime Minister of the Republic of India. Tengo el gran placer. It is my great pleasure to welcome His Excellency, the Prime Minister of India, whom I address, invite to address the General Assembly. Good morning. Your Excellency, Mr. President. It is a great honor for me to address the 74th session of the United Nations on behalf of 1.3 billion Indians. It is a very special occasion also because this year the entire world is celebrating the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi. His message of truth and nonviolence is very relevant for us even today for peace, development, and progress in the world. Mr. President, this year witnessed the world's biggest election in the world's biggest democracy, the highest ever number of voters voted my government into power for a second term with an even stronger mandate than before. And it is thanks to this mandate that I am standing here before you once again. However, the message that this mandate conveys has an even greater significance, a wider and more inspiring one. Mr. President, when a developing country is able to successfully implement the world's biggest sanitation campaign within the Clean India mission, building over 110 million toilets in just five years for its countrymen. All its achievements and outcomes are an inspirational message for the entire world. When a developing country successfully runs the world's biggest health assurance scheme, giving 500 million people the facility of an annual health cover of 500,000 rupees for free treatment, the achievements and responsive systems that result from this scheme show the world a new path. When a developing country successfully runs the biggest financial inclusion scheme of the world, opening over 370 million bank accounts for the poor in just five years, the systems that result build confidence in the poor across the entire world. When a developing country launches for its citizens the world's biggest digital identification program, giving them a biometric identity, enabling them to avail their rights, and saving approximately $20 billion by checking corruption. The modern systems that result from it give the world a new hope. Mr. President, as I came in here, On a wall at the entrance of this building, I noticed the call to make the United Nations free of single-use plastic. I am pleased to inform this august assembly 
that even as I am addressing you today, a very large campaign is being started across the entire country to make India free of single-use plastic. In the next five years, in the next five years, apart from promoting water conservation, we are going to ensure water supply to 150 million homes. In the next five years, we are going to build over 125,000 kilometers of new roads. By the year 2022, when India celebrates its 75th Independence Day, we plan to build 20 million houses for the poor. Though the world may have set itself the target of eradicating TB by 2030, in India, we are working towards eradicating it by 2025. The question that arises is just how have we been able to achieve all of this? How is it that such rapid changes are taking place in a new India? Mr. President, India is a great culture that is thousands of years old, a culture that has its own vibrant traditions and which has encompassed universal dreams. Our values and culture see divinity in every being and strive for the welfare of all. Therefore, the very core of our approach is public welfare through public participation. And this public welfare is not just for India but for the entire world. And that is the reason. And that is the reason we draw inspiration from our motto, collective efforts for the growth of all with everyone's trust. And this too is not confined within the borders of India. Um, our endeavors are neither an expression of pity nor a pretense. They are inspired by a sense of duty and duty alone. All our endeavors are centered on 1.3 billion Indians. But the dreams that these efforts are trying to fulfill are the same dreams that the entire world has, that every country has, and that every society has. The efforts are ours, but the fruits are for all, for the entire world. And this conviction of mine gets stronger every day when I think of those countries who, just like India, are striving for development, each in their own way. When I hear about their joys and sorrows, when I get to know about their dreams, my resolve to develop my country at a faster pace gets even stronger so that India's experience can be beneficial to these countries also. Mr. President, about 3,000 3, years ago, you know, 3,000 years ago, 
a great poet of India whose name was Kanyan Pungundranar. He wrote in Tamil, which is the most ancient language of the world. He said, Yadamure Yavrum Kerir, which means we belong to all places and we belong to everyone. And this is something that was said 3,000 years ago. This sense of belonging beyond borders is unique to India. In the last five years, India has worked towards strengthening its centuries-old great tradition of fraternity among nations and working for the welfare of the world, which is indeed in line with the key objectives of the United Nations. The issues that India raises, the kind of new global platforms that India has come forward to build, seek collective efforts to address serious global challenges and issues. Mr. President, if you look at it from a historic and per capita emission perspective, India's contribution to global warming is very low. However, India is one of the leading nations when it comes to taking steps to addressing this issue. On one hand, we are working towards achieving the target of 450 gigawatts of renewable energy. And on the other hand, we have also taken the initiative to create the International Solar Alliance. One of the effects of global warming is the increasing number and severity of natural resources. And not just that, at the same time, they are appearing in new areas and in new forms. In view of this, India has initiated the formation of the Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure, which is also called CDRI. This coalition is something I invite all countries to join. This coalition will help build infrastructure that can withstand natural disasters. Mr. President, The largest number of supreme sacrifices made by soldiers of any country for the UN peacekeeping missions is from India. We belong to a country that has given the world not war, but Buddha's message of peace. And that is the reason why our voice against terrorism to alert the world about this evil rings with seriousness, seriousness and outrage. We believe that this is one of the biggest challenges not for any single country, but for the entire world and humanity. The lack of unanimity 
amongst us on the issue of terrorism dense those very principles that are the basis for the creation of the UN. And that is why, for the sake of humanity, I firmly believe that it is absolutely imperative that the world unites against terrorism and that the world stands as one against terrorism. Mr. President, the face of the world is changing today. Modern technology in the 21st century is bringing about sweeping changes in social life, personal life, economy, security, connectivity, and in international relations. In such a situation, a fragmented world is in the interest of no one, neither do we have the option to confine ourselves within our boundaries. In this new era, we will have to give new direction to multilateralism and to the United Nations. We will need to give it new strength. Mr. President, 125 years ago, the great spiritual guru, Swami Vivekanand, gave this message to the world during the World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, right here in America. The message was harmony and peace and not dissension. Today, the message from the world's largest democracy for the international community is still the same, harmony and peace. Thank you all very much. In nombre de la on behalf of the General Assembly, I would like to thank His Excellency, the Prime Minister of India, for his address. I would ask protocol to please escort him. <laughs>